Hey everybody, I'm about to do a podcast with my dad. So I'm trying to set it all up here in the kitchen with the old microphone and another chair. And I might get him to like wiggle over this away so that we're both in screen. But anywho, um, I just kind of wanted to set this to see if, if you guys could even see me. We good? You guys good? Y'all watching? Okay, cool. Stand by. My camera. All right, guys, you ready? Here we go. We're going to kick it off. Hello, and thank you for stopping in to the Stuff I Heard podcast. This is your host, Joshua Peak. And today, I always tell you the date for some reason. Today is October the 13th, which is a Saturday. Um, here next to me is my dad. Say hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. And my dad is here visiting from Maine slash Georgia to help me build a porch deck with a pergola. Um, I was told not to call it a porch by somebody, I don't exactly know who, but it's a back deck and it has a, we're going to eventually have a pergola on top of it. It didn't have it before, but it's going to. And, and it's huge. And it's, got the biggest deck in town. I got the biggest deck in, you know, no just joke. don't Google that because that's going to lead you down a whole different rabbit hole. But anyway. You spell it right. It's not dock and it's not dock, it's deck. D-E, E is in Dundang. Easter deck. <clears throat> so, anywho. Anywho. Um, yeah, so we have uh, went and spent a fortune down at the uh, local hardware store to uh, pick up a lot of wood and our neighbor Paul has been kind enough to come help us and Paul the plumber. Paul is a uh, retired master plumber and uh, so your face is like halfway in the line here. Does that mean you're off the side of the screen? Maybe. Those little white lines there. So Maybe. You be, I can move no, over. I can, I can wiggle my camera. See this well, is man, the part. I don't want you. It's your podcast. I don't want this you is like the me. video part of it where you kind of want to check in. I want you in. to be less favorably shown than I am even though I am your dad. Well see even on this camera I look smaller than you. You notice that? Maybe it's the beard. Hmm. Maybe it's the beard that you makes you thought about growing a beard. I had a beard. It wasn't a big beard. It was a little beard. You ever thought about growing a big beard? No. It look you'd look good in a big beard. Not yet. Yeah. Like I am a papa though. You know, mm. I got a grandson and he's he's adorable. Matter of fact, uh, today uh, his dad took him to see Disney on Ice. That's a crazy good video. Are it you is a put great it up on video. Podcast so people can see it. I should put like a. I should put like a, a, a section right here. I tell you what, we're two minutes in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put in a thing right here, and you're gonna see it, and you're gonna be like, "Oh, that's so cute!" Okay, do it now. One, two, three. What was that? That was the, that was the video. Oh. So we're gonna do my, my thing, not his thing, because. I'm, I'm making a YouTube video while he's making his podcast. We're so making, we're making like double stereo. YouTube videos while we're making a podcast. So if you're listening to this on podcast, you want to go check out the YouTube videos. But it's not like stereo to heaven or anything like that. It's just you stereo. can check out my, my, my channel on YouTube, which is Joshua Peak, or my dad's, which is R-P-E-E-K. Um, the R stands for Richard. So, you know, just letting you know where to honey find us. Honey right over there, by the way. She didn't want to Say be on the honey podcast. Babe. See? See? They're, they're off people all over the place. We've got an audience. Um, live audience. You got a live audience. Well, yeah. if I do one, it's usually my wife looking at me, rolling her eyes, like, "Oh my God, is he talking about that again?" Um, <clears throat> we just had a great meal, by the way. He made this chicken thing, but it wasn't quite as good as the as the beef thing he made last night. Oh, the fish and thing, the fish, fish and fish thing. He made like salmon last night, and then he made a beef thing last night, and then he made chicken thing last night. I mean today. And I tell you, it just gets better and better. I, I don't want to say that because I like the salmon tremendously, but I think I might have liked the beef better, but then the chicken was awesome. Good. The boys got cooking skills, that's all I can say. I've been practicing. Yeah. I got a He's new got cooking skills. I got a new Gorilla so Grill, uh, G R I L L A. It's got grill. a chimney on it. Um, go check out their website. You'll got see a little, little soup can. Matter of fact, go on their YouTube and check out their YouTube videos. They got side by side comparisons where they compare themselves to Trigger and Camp Chef and a you bunch know, so of other. So far, this whole ones. podcast thing is about nothing. It's the idea. It's yeah. stuff I heard. Yeah, it's see, like Jerry Seinfeld. Later on, you can tell other people this is stuff I heard, and they'll be like, "Oh, I know where I heard you heard that." Shouldn't and we talk about some important thing? Um, Do you know any important things? Yeah, I know a few important things, but I don't know if I can talk about them. You yeah, know, don't talk about them. About legal. Nothing political. Yeah. Nothing political, nothing religious. No, no no, inside secrets of the government or anything like that. Well, you know, I, I know that you know that I know that you work for the CIA undercover. You're an undercover agent for the CIA. You're not supposed to talk about that. Shh. Um, 
So yeah, no, nothing really important. There's nothing to see here. Um, <clears throat> move on. Move on. Uh, so uh, Paul helped out a lot the last couple of days, and and you know this project started off being just me and my dad talking about we could get this done, no problem. And I happened to bump into my neighbor, and I asked him. I said, you know, hey, if you're not busy, you know, and you want to help out, and he goes, oh, I'd love to help out. I need to get outside and get some exercise. And I'll tell you what, it helped a lot having a third set of arms coming out there and helping us get around because uh, it ended up being more than we could tackle with just two people. Um, today, my wife and Trish went out and had a day at the gym and went to work out and, and run the rail trail. And uh, after they got done running errands, my wife actually jumped out there and helped us a good bit too. So that was very helpful. So picture picture Paul with a level, with a with beam, and he's going this way. And then picture Josh, who doesn't have a level, but he's looking at it and holding it and wiggling it back and forth and then picture me down here on my knees with a board and i'm going up and down and i got a screwdriver gun and they're going a little bit to the right a little bit to the left a little bit up a little bit down shoot that thing no wait wait you know it's like it was like it was very dramatic it was very dramatic there was a lot going on very dramatic and it took three guys to do it and then when dolores came out it took three guys and a gal and then my wife came around and she gave wonderful comments so it was like three guys and two gals and it was just it's amazing that there's a pork chunk back there, that's all I can say. Yesterday was the amazing feat of doing that while slow cooking a pork butt on the grill for nine, hours. Talk, nine hours. Nine whole hours. You're talking about your butt on It had a smoke ring. I know I, I need to put that in this you video. Know, I need to put it right here just I'm gonna put a video at six minutes, okay? Mark that. Somebody else listening, you're gonna you're gonna go back and watch here, this. One, two, three. I thought you were gonna clap. Well, wait, wait, nothing, man. If you're listening to it right now, you're like, please wait, wait, don't clap. Have you ever seen Merlin clap to make no? He goes Shazam. What does he do? He goes. I thought he said Shazam. Well, Shazam. Or no, he doesn't do Shazam. Yeah, what does that's Merlin a whole do? Different, that's a whole different line of literature. He's like, he makes it happen. Hmm. Mm. I don't know. I think Merlin's a ripoff. What? I think wow. he's. I think he's. A, I think he's a sham. He can turn. He can turn no, not. stuff into gold. No, I think he's a snake oil salesman, and he's got everybody convinced he's magical. No, and no, no. meanwhile, all it is is he got some Chinese fireworks, Stop and he's talking. making some cool, you know, things go off like Roman candles. I don't know what I was going to say. Maybe he's a time traveler. Like Merlin. Maybe I mean, he's a time traveler. And he came back with fireworks and like and like keg beer, and everybody thought he was awesome because he came like back. Like that with movie, The Connecticut Yankee, where the guy makes a pistol and shoots the other night with it. You don't know about that movie. You don't know about that. Have ever seen it? Before. No. But I'm picturing Merlin and live with a mullet. You know, they always drew him with, with like a funky hat. But maybe he had a mullet. Maybe he was like a like a rocker from the 80s, and he just happened to find himself, you know, in, in a fireworks stand, and it became like a time portal, and he went back well, in time. Well, that's not like Dumbledore. And then there was dragons, and he was like, I got this, and he's like shooting off, you know, Roman candles, and I'm like, think, oh, I think he's mullet, magic. Mullet was like the older version of Dumbledore. I think they made Dumbledore as a recreation of Merlin. That's very possible. Yeah. Well, you know, the, 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 the folklore of Merlin was just like, you know, the pentacle of we need to have a mysterious, creepy, smart guy that knows how to shoot off fireworks with his mullet. It's a mullet. You know. Is that a fish? It's the short hair in the front and the long hair in the back. Party in the front. Or uh, was it business in the front and party in the back? It was a big haircut in the People 80s. People do that? Yeah. They did that in the 80s? Oh, they did it. They do it now. I don't want to see it. No, no, no let's Google it. Listen, if you're no, if you're at home, this no, is a this no, is a home no, companion. No, 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 you want to Google it. Listen, there's some things you don't want to know about. Image of there's mullet some haircut. There's something you no, 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 no. You want there's to some see things you can't forget if you've ever Listen. seen them before. I'm looking Listen. away. Oh, look at there. Oh, <laughs> that's like Dukes of Hazard sort of. A little bit. <laughs> oh, uh, if you're not, this is the image of Joe Dirt. I'm showing. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. I, Oh, that's that's too hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sell it, yeah. Tom sell it, yeah. That's not too bad. Yeah, okay. I the mullet. Oh, that's bad. Okay, let's stop talking about that. The mullet. Come on. Okay. See, I thought a mullet was a fish. Nah, a mullet. Well, that's a that's a is, that's that mullet. Yeah, a mullet is a fish. Is, also. is there such a fish as a mullet? I think there is. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of fishes You're with weird one. names. Some are named Fred. Some are named. Fred Mullet. George and yeah. Marlin. And, you know, Marlin yeah, they got all kind of weird mullet mar, mar, fish names. So, yeah. anywho, anyway. um, 
We are deep in a project, and this project kind of reminded me of a show that I'm watching on Netflix uh, right now with a comedian named Jack Whitehall. I don't know who Jack Whitehall is. Apparently, he's a uh, English comedian. But there's a show on Netflix called Jack Whitehall Travels with My Dad or with My Father or something like that. And there's two seasons on there, and they're great. Um, apparently, Jack's dad's name is Michael, and he had him very late in life, like 46. So, in this show, Jack's like close to 30 and his dad's in his late 70s and they're traveling together and his dad's like a very prim and proper British guy with his three-piece suit on and his you know his hat and he does not want to do anything that Jack wants to do. Jack wants to have fun and go party and see the world and 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 his dad wants to go to the opera and go see a play and maybe you know see some some relics <laughs> holes in the ground that kind of stuff but they sort of compromise with each other and they do a little bit of what Jack likes and a little bit of what Mike likes. And it was, it's really funny and really cool because even though, you know, Mike, Michael seems like he doesn't have a sense of humor, his humor is very dry. And at a certain part, they get a, um, they get some kind of doll as like a, um, inflatable? A, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, they're in Thailand and this lady makes <laughs> dolls that are supposed to be good luck. And oh. people pay big money for this kind of stuff, and and they name it Winston. I don't exactly know why. I guess after Winston Churchill, because because Mike says that uh, Winston Churchill was his favorite uh, hero ever um, because of World War II, and he he fought in World War II. Anyway, what was the name of the guy that was that was trapped on the island that had a ball. Uh, 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 that's Wilson. Uh, Wilson. That's Wilson. Not Winston. Yeah, Wilson. Winston. Winston. Wilson. So anyway, they carry Winston with them everywhere, and apparently the dad's gotten well, into Winston like Winston tastes good like a cigarette. Sure. Making clothing look just like what he's wearing so everywhere they go they have matching outfits and i think he's secretly doing it just to piss off jack because he keeps like he keeps talking about oh my son my favorite boy and he's like dad, dad what <laughs> <laughs> so it's like an ongoing joke everywhere they go it's like where's winston so if you ever see jack like handling winston usually like his head's in his backpack with his legs sticking up and no don't do that to my boy get him out of there you know and it's just <laughs> it's an added element to it that I really think that Michael's just doing it to screw with him. <laughs> it is hilarious. I like the sounds of that. I'd probably like to watch this. It's funny. Yeah. Um, Although, you know, sometimes your humor and my humor is like... The same? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. So Sickly unrecognizable as humor. The, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Uh, Mom, if you're listening to this, it's the same with you. You're the, <laughs> I get the, I get a blending of both sense of humor, and you're both silly. Um, but yeah, we got a lot done today, and I'm super proud of us. And we did uh, get a lot done today. You this, know, we had like three poles standing this morning. Now we've got a whole, a whole fleet of poles. A whole, a whole, what's, a, a, what's a a bundle of poles? Uh, that, that would be what's a grouping of poles? I think it's a gaggle of poles. That's a geese. Well, it could be a murder of poles. That's death crows. What are Polish people? What's a bunch of Polish people called? Um, uh, foreigners. <laughs> <laughs> but they're nice foreigners. I like. I mean, I think. Are they I, Catholic I've known, or are they? I don't know. I've known some Polish people. They're really not. Are they? You know, Polish descendant. I think they just call them Poles. You know, there used to be a thing as Polak jokes, and and it became. I Those mean, are awful now. Everything became politically incorrect at some right. point, but it used to be on Johnny Carson show. You'd. Well, you know, it, what's two poles walking to the bar and blah blah blah? You know, I mean, it was all. Well, when was, I was a kid, it, that was the that was the stick in line. Whenever it got, because we live in the South, all the jokes used to be about black people, and it was like black references. And then they were like, "You can't say that anymore." So then it all became about Polish people. Polish and, jokes. And and you ha you and didn't you know, know Irish jokes are okay. Have you ever noticed you can make any kind of joke you want to about the Irish, and they're like, <laughs> "Yeah, baby." <laughs> you can do the same thing with rednecks. Like Jeff oh, Foxworthy yeah. goes around talking about, you might be a redneck if... And if there's a redneck in the house, he goes, yeah, that's right! You know, you know when I was a kid, redneck was a bad thing, or considered a bad thing. Well, you know, I, I Although, listened to a none guy... none of us knew what a real redneck was until... And once we figured out what a redneck was, it was okay. Yeah, it's just the Scottish people from, from working in the fields are always bent over doing stuff in the back of their necks getting ready. They don't have to be Scottish. They get this yeah, Scottish-Irish. That's usually the, 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 the descendants of that's the Appalachian people. That's what we are. Um... One of my favorite comedians, Bert Kreischer, his wife uh, is from... You ever done a podcast where you didn't mention Bert? Nope. I'm going to mention Bert oh, every day. By like... the way, if you, don't, if you haven't watched it yet, go check out uh, Secret Time Lord, on Netflix. Lawrence, does he ever go through a day without mentioning Secret Time Bert? on Netflix. Do you it think you have hilarious. an unusual fixation on Bert? Yeah, Bert, if you ever check you out my podcast... Maybe he should move along you, beyond Bert. But maybe. listen, 
his it's wife. A man crush on you, you people, let me ask you people, because you people ain't never seen him before, but you people, <laughs> do you ever wish you'd stop talking about two things, Bert or his butt? Mm, they haven't tasted my butt. <laughs> Listen, if you taste my butt, you know what I'm talking you're about. You're gonna be like, right? holy cow, Bert would love this butt. He puts up pictures of his butt on Listen, Facebook all the time. If anybody else tried my butt, they'd be like, you know what? You should really start this butt. I don't want to hear you talk that way. No, I can't. But you. Bert would love that butt. No, 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 no. Anyway, his, his wife is from Alabama. I don't want to talk about Bert. And and he she said, take your shirt off. No. <laughs> I haven't gotten there yet with my guy. Bert it's like, gonna takes get his shirt there. off. He does his comedy thing. Yeah, but I not. wouldn't know this if he didn't keep telling me, but I've seen Bert. I'm not a Bert super fan. That's why I'm going to rip off my shirt. Me, but my I shirt. did go to the comedy show, and that was that was really awesome. I got my picture taken. I should put that picture in right here, I'm, but I'm not going to. You guys know what it looks like. Go check out my Instagram at J-T-A-T-P-E-E-K, and you'll see pictures. We had a good time. Alex and I went. Alex, if you're listening, love you. Where's the other podcast? You only got a few hey, episodes. Right. Um, but yeah, his wife, Leanne, is from Georgia. Who's from, what? Alex's um, wife? From Alabama. No, uh, Bert's wife. Uh, we're back to Bert again. Leanne Kreischer. Does she, he ever get off Bert? She's from, uh, uh, what's that have to do with Polish come people? On, where is it? It's just, it's on, it's just over the Alabama line, uh, just over the Georgia line. Uh, uh Brennan. Aniston? Brennan, Brennan, Alabama. Brennan? Brennan. 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 Brennan? Yeah. Alabama? Yeah. You talking about on Interstate 20? Yeah. Uh, She's just right over the line, apparently. Anyway, uh, um, her big thing when she was growing up was she didn't mind being called redneck. You just, you just if you called her a hillbilly, she read that was like the term that they were ready to fight over. Because mm -hmm. apparently, if you came we're down with that, trash. if you, well, they were okay with that. <laughs> but where, where she drew the line was when you called her hillbilly. She's like, do not like that's the that's fighting that's fighting words. Mm -hmm. And it has something to do apparently with the fact that they came down from Appalachia. And apparently moved to the lower area and, so and thought folks. of themselves as bigger people, so like, like better people. You know, your 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 Irish descendants, your Scotch Irish descendants, were living up in Virginia somewhere, and then they went into northern uh, northern North Carolina, and they were well. This problem was right in the and they were stuff fleeing from something because uh, the peaks have started more churches in this country than anyone you can imagine. If you go back and study the peak history, like every, they've started more Baptist churches than you can possibly believe. I started the church of stuff, was that stuff is well, stuff my, I heard. My dad so. started the church. It's, like, <laughs> it's, just, it's just ridiculous. But however, um, one of the things I discovered about the peaks, and maybe I shouldn't say this because I'm living in the South and the Confederacy might throw me out, but I've discovered that there was some peaks in our history. There, there was some peaks in our history that were um, there was some peaks in our history that were strongly against slavery, but they were strongly f against the northerners coming down here and telling us what to do. And that line of the peaks lost three sons in that war. But there was also some peaks in our history that fought for the northern side, for whatever reason. And yeah, you know, I've often wondered because my family never, we never had any history beyond mom and dad that I knew of, or maybe their grandparents. And I've often wondered if they hid our history because a line of the Peak family fought for the North in the, and, and since we all live in the South, maybe they were trying to erase that. Trying to move forward? Trying to move forward and try to pretend that we have no history so we don't know anything about these peaks oh, that supposedly oh, fought oh. for the North. Since we're talking about history, I want you to tell the story of Granddaddy Peak in the wrestling match. Okay. There, if if y'all haven't heard this, then you're in for a treat. But uh, this is something uh, Dad just recently told me, and I was like, wait, 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 save this for the podcast. So, your dad, George well, Oliver. To Peake. understand this, you'd have to understand that my dad was the was the gentlest, kindest, quietest man you would ever know, and he never. And this is this is the absolute truth. In his whole life, I never heard him issue a curse, a curse word or tell. I don't a dirty think I've joke. ever seen him over 150 all. pounds either. Yeah, tiny little thing. Tiny guy. Sweet guy. Loved Hard everybody. Guy. Everybody loved him. He did every. He did so many nice things for so many people. He's the. I've talked about this before. How he's the measuring stick that I used to give preachers when I'd go in to hear them speak on, in sermons. If they didn't measure up to Granddaddy Peak, I thought, yeah, you're not following God. So when we were kids, we used to go down to Florida for a vacation every year. And one year when we went to Florida, um, they were having a wrestling match out in a field and there was a wrestling ring set up in a field and there was a bunch of people that were there, hundreds of people. And it was a it was a live wrestling match in this field and my dad and my mom was there. And during the wrestling match, 
my dad saw that one of the wrestlers had something in his hand and he kept rubbing it in the other guy's eye. He would like grab a hold of them and rub it in his eye when the referee wasn't looking and the other guy would go, ah, you know. And of course it was probably fake, but you know, wrestling is fake. But to my dad, it was unfair. To my dad, this guy was doing something wrong and he wasn't being caught for it and my dad couldn't take it anymore. So my dad leapt into the ring, all 120 pounds of him, and took this thing that this guy had in his hand away from him. <laughs> and the crowd goes silent. <laughs> They're like, my, wait, we had a show we had planned. <laughs> and my dad, and my dad like, Who's this guy? <laughs> jumps out of the ring with this thing because now he's made the wrong ride and everything's okay and the fight can go on. And the, and the wrestler didn't kill my dad. He was so astonished at this little, <laughs> this little Baptist guy leapt into the ring and took this thing away from me, and, you know, and then the and then the fight went on. And With wire rim glasses. And my mom was like, Charles, Oliver, what are you thinking? Good grief! You know? Now here, here's the difference between my two grandfathers. My mom's dad, his name is Frank. Mm. Frank was what would you say, six three, six two? He, he was wild. Six four. He was wild. He was wild as a cost would come. Like and strong. and as strong as you he go, was, and, he was wilder and, than a than a than a. Frank looked Very, like a, a claw, a claw, a, a hammer. One of those with the claws on it to put nails out. Don't you think? You ever notice how he did his hair back like that? I have his same arms right here. Yeah. Alex and I both have his same forearms. I've yeah. noticed that every time I, every time I see myself in the mirror. Frank looked like a wow. claw hammer. He looked like he could whip anybody's ass. Well, he did back in, I've seen yeah. a picture of him in a leather jacket when he lived in Chicago. He was a, you know, he was. There's some, there's some story that I got to tell at some point on here. Whenever I'm sure that the mafia is not going to dig him up to no, kill him don't again. Don't bring them up, and don't bring anything, um, any old cars that are buried anywhere, or bodies in them, or anything. But there was a wrestling story where he took my cousins Angel Shannon and Matthew to a wrestling match in Atlanta, and he didn't watch wrestling, but he heard them talk about how much they loved wrestling, and he said, oh, "I'll take you." And he goes to the match, and he didn't understand anything about what was going on. But in, in wrestling, they all play roles. There's a good guy, and there's a bad guy, and at a certain part, you know, they call him into the ring, and, and Usually they call in the bad guy, and of course they have like more menacing music. And as the guys walking down, people boo them, and they're and like, oh. and, and the guys in the crowd's like, Rawr! you know, they always give the kids a hard time. Sometimes he has a mask on. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, this time this person was walking down the aisle, and everybody was leering at the guy, and he was, you know, at the same time like Rawr! at the people, and apparently he did that towards that my cousins. Be- that and my papa mistake. went, oh, hell no. And my papa leaped over and commenced to whipping this dude's ass in the aisle. He would do that. And, like, security guards came over to tackle him. He put three people in the hospital, yeah. and the next thing I know, he was being, that was, yeah, that was he was being locked up. <laughs> but, he, but he, and meanwhile, while they're attacking him, like, my cousins are like, don't beat on my papa. So they got involved in it, too, and it was just, it was Let me chaos tell you about bedlam. Frank. One of my first jobs, I was working for Frank, and we were, we were, uh, pouring concrete for a bunch of these apartments that they were building in Atlanta. This was back in the in the uh, 70s, early 70s. Um, and he left the job site and there was a bunch of guys there and, and, and I guess they thought it would be a really fun prank. They t- they asked me to come up and to climb down in this hole and hold this, this stick. And then they swung the arm of a concrete truck over and they poured concrete in the hole until I was buried up to my chest. And they were standing around laughing about that. And I was just dumb enough. I was just a kid. I was so dumb that I'm standing there holding the stick. Thinking, what now? And I'm buried up to my chest and I can't move. And then Frank came back. And you would not believe. He, he lost his mind. And everybody on the job site lost their mind. And all of a sudden, there were shovels flying. There were people digging me out. They were, they were afraid he was going to kill every one of them. And you know what? I was... He probably could have. I hadn't even. I was so. I was so ignorant and young. I didn't realize that you know this is a really bad place to be when you're buried in concrete up to your chest. He's like, get him out of there! And they were like, ooh! <laughs> and they started. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty good. Well, you were saying that you that you heard that he had he knew somebody that was buried alive at a site. I can't remember who, but you were saying could have been your mom told you that. I don't know. Yeah, he 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 was at a site where somebody got got buried alive like that, and and I think that struck a nerve with him ever since. Yeah, but he you know he was very protective of family, and 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 I remember mom telling me stories about how he was uh, he was a pretty abusive guy when he was younger, 
and he drank a lot and he you know he smoked and you know what and he did he, the first time i saw him after not seeing him for about 40 years i was the me and your mom had, had, had gotten a divorce and and uh, danny told me once that he would you know kill me badly if i ever did anything wrong with your mom and of course i didn't see danny again for a very long time so i thought i was in the clear the first time i saw frank again he walked up to me and he went <laughs> and then he came out and he had a little knife in his hand and he said i could have spilled your guts just now that's i guess how he was to family he used to do that kind of crap with us as family um but now the same person when i was born he he told my mom he says i'll never hit him i'll never i'll never mistreat him and he quit drinking shortly after i was like i think i was maybe six or seven we were we were hanging out and I think he had a beer sitting out and I grabbed his beer and took a sip and like, oh, this is gross. And he went, yeah. And I said, why do you drink it if it's gross? He goes, you know what? I don't know. And he quit drinking right then. He used to smoke. He quit smoking because he said, I, I want to be around long enough to see this kid grow up. And he chewed tobacco until his teeth fell out. And when he had to replace his teeth, he thought, well, this is a horrible habit. And he just quit. And he, he went from that point on to tell me, don't ever do this stuff. This is awful for you. And I remember him coming home, I must have been four or five years old, and he says, I'm going to teach you your multiplication tables because I didn't learn this until I was an adult, but you need to learn this now so that you can be ahead of the game. And he sat me down at four years old, and we spent weeks going over multiplication tables until I could do all of them up to ten. And, and then he's like, you know, he'd come home one day and he's like, oh man, you got to hear about this thing called computers. It's the future. And he was right. He had a vision for things. And he definitely never mistreated me and always was willing to do whatever he had to do. He's not the kind of guy that he would walk up to you and go, you know what, I love you, man, it's good to see you. Yeah. No, he wasn't that guy. Um, you know, but it's, it's two different worlds, you know, two different pathways. And it's, it's sort of, it, it's a good background to grow from because you know that no matter what, somebody's got your back. And somebody's going to show you the right way. And out of that, there's always some good in it. So I think both of them would have had a, a, a really kick out of watching Dad and I build this thing and seeing the projects that we're doing together. Um, they would probably both just be tickled. So um, I need to reset this. Hang on. My camera, this camera, only records for like... 30 minutes and then it shuts off and I have to hit record again. So you want any, you, you, you want, you want any banjo music in this? No. Okay. No, I don't, I don't think anybody did does. You, did you get that on tape? You, you, you can get it on <laughs> Did you get that one. on tape? Yeah, it's on, it's on the audio. And you got, on, you got, you're saying no on no, tape, right? No, <laughs> That's no, my boy. No. Dang. You can, what is it? You can tune a fish, but you can't tune over there laughing. banjo. She's laughing right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no banjo. <laughs> you can make the sounds with your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do doodling banjos? Ding 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 ding. Ding 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 ding. Ding 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 ding. Ding 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 Someone's going to die soon. <laughs> yeah. There's a yeah. blind three-fingered dude staring at me playing a banjo. This is going to yeah, end badly. Yeah. Something bad's happening here. He never smiles. The blind the blind banjo player never smiles. Yeah, something's wrong. Well, when I was, what was it, 15, I broke my fist, and then I went to visit you, and we were swimming around, and I had to swim with my cast up out of the water. And you're like, hey, look, it's Deliverance. And I was like, what's that? I went and watched that movie afterwards. Thanks a lot for that, by the way. <laughs> yeah. There's an image you won't ever leave. <laughs> Boy, howdy! <laughs> it sort of, sort of shapes your, uh, your, your, your belief in people. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. All the love that they can give. <laughs> <laughs> okay, stop. Behave. <clears throat> this, how long does this go on for? As long as I want it to. So we could be doing this still tomorrow morning or something. Well, I've had some that are like, like I think last week's was 28 minutes or so, and I did one with Greg that was an hour and 43 minutes once. You know, all of my YouTube villa viewers stopped watching like no, they 27 haven't. minutes ago because all my videos are only like three minutes long. You, so you're like, you're yeah, ain't watching this crap no more. They are watching it right now going, this is the best stuff they're, ever. They're watching Musty One. No, they're, they're watching not. 63 no, they're, not. they're watching Mr. Heavy Listen, Chevy. They're watching 
Uh, cut warm. If 63 and Palace sets himself on fire, then they'll watch every well, second yeah. of that. Otherwise, they're skipping through and they're like, wait, just get to the thing. Well, he does, he's just like your podcast, he does like 20, 30 minute videos. But he, oh, I know. There must, very, when I click on him, he's got thousands of views on the one he just posted that day. I'm like, millions of views. That day. And Musty One. You ever seen how many views Musty One gets? Like Musty the One whole is world, The whole world just waiting for Musty One to fix something. And have, he's, have you noticed? You know, he's the awesomest guy. Have you in noticed real life. anybody else's? I know we met him. He's, I know. That's what I mean. He's the awesomest guy. We went and guy. saw his contraption. Well, we've been to his house. Got, got the and he's, been guy. he's the awesomest guy. Anyway. The best part is, is like, when you watch other people's videos and you see comments and it's like, hey, have you ever checked out Musty One's channel? <laughs> yeah. yeah, people tell me. You know, people I, recommend I, him all the time. Like, you really should check out Musty One's video. Uh, like, my, thanks, I appreciate that. My mower breaks down up. and somebody says, hey, have you called Musty One? So I actually called them on the, on video and hey, Musty One. They had that weed whacker bill that we yeah. had to start. Yeah, so. I, oh, that reminds me. I have a weed whacker that doesn't work. And if you want another one of the, the project, you're more than welcome to have it and use it and sell it or whatever. Set it on fire. I'll fix it. Make a video smashing it. Didn't matter. I got the skills, you know. I fixed two in a row now. I also have attachments that may fit the one you have. Oh, I saw that thing on the garage. It's got the little rototiller. Yeah, honey, he's got a weed whacker that that can be a rototiller. We can have a garden. Yeah, she's it's totally, totally, totally worse. Listening. Look, she's totally tuned us both out. Tracy like, said we could say the house right is now. on fire. We could say all kind of things, and she's like, not listening. Hmm. Mm. My wife does that too. She's yeah. like, whatever, he's talking about yeah, okay. something else. Yeah, okay. I get that. I totally get that. I totally get it too. I, I wouldn't listen to me. I wouldn't watch my videos. I wouldn't watch your... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you see that? You see You see what kind of stuff I got to put up with around here? He don't watch my videos anyway. <laughs> I can go, I I can go months and he's like, so what are you up to? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Just I a lot. <laughs> I mean, while you haven't watched in a while, I got like almost 1,500 videos, so you know, just click on one of them, maybe. <laughs> of course, the exact opposite's with him, because he posts like five a day. Six. Six a day, <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll turn on him like, oh, I have 20 I haven't seen in a day or two. Yeah. Crap. Yeah. And there's sometimes I just go, all right, let's just see what he's it doing. Amazes, oh, there's one I can watch. It amazes me how many people does watch that crap that I wrote. Every and, one of and them. And like Big Daddy. Oh, Listen, Big Daddy. Hey. Big, Big and, Daddy 1992. And don't don't let him. Sent you a letter. Don't let him. It's right over there. Well, let's get it. Don't it's, don't let him. Don't let him fool you. He loves every one of you. Even if he says every one of you watches all this crap. That's true. It's Richard. Listen, we got to do this. Big Daddy 1992. Big Daddy 1992. Listen, I want to give a big shout out. He sent me pink pelicans. I want to give a big. Don't show his address on the thing. Um, I want to give a big shout out to Big Daddy 1992 because he gives me a lot of love on Instagram and on YouTube and on the podcast. And, and buddy, he's a darn nice guy. He's a darn nice guy. He wanted to send me some stuff and I told him, I said, I, I feel weird about just giving up my home address to just anybody. And he's he's like, got more stuff than anybody I know. He's like, well, he said, uh, he I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to send you something. He said, but go get you one of them there uh, P.O. boxes and it'll be a lot easier. He may not have said it that way. I may be exaggerating the, the tone and all. But I have a letter. I have a letter from And I should say him. that from time to time people watch my videos and they comment on stuff and then they disappear because they get sick of me. And then years later they come back and say, huh, you're still here. And this guy is like watching all my videos, making comments. And I get up every morning and I look at my oh, cool. stuff and I comment back to the people that comment on my stuff because it's cool. But anyway, Big Daddy, look, what a nice guy. He, he, uh, he sent me a decal. For his podcast, sure, for, his, for no, his YouTube. Don't be, don't be cutting my guy's show. Well, your, your, your camera's way over there. Well, yeah. Um, it says YouTube, Big Daddy 1992, Made in America. And it's got, uh, on the back of it, it's a little handwritten note that says, Can you give this to Josh Peak? Thanks. I listen to your podcast. Yeah. Imagine that. My podcast. Not your, he listens. Not your podcast. He listens. But he listens to it. He listens, he listens to it. Hey, yeah. buddy, I appreciate it, man. You know what I do? I got a special place for Did this. Did you know you can increase your speed on your podcast so that you're talking faster? And then instead of being a 30 minute video, it becomes like, if, like you, if you double it, it's like 15. And if you do it about times four, it's like seven yeah. minutes. Some people do it to work out, they'll <laughs> speed it up to beats per second. So they can hear, you know. So then I went to the gym. Then I work out. You know, thing again. you just gave me a great idea for a new video. I could, I could do one of your podcasts at a high speed and put some banjo music to it. <laughs> oh, that's disturbing. That's so disturbing. Did you just snort? It tickled him so much. He's, look, he's turning red like a shirt. 
<laughs> I could take your, some of your music and put it in here and make it into like techno music. <laughs> And put it with drone video. Do so it, do like, it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll hear the kids like, have you heard that new banjo do it, techno? Do it, do it. It's so awesome. <laughs> I want to hear it. How would that go? What does that sound like? I, I don't know. It'd be very disturbing. <laughs> I don't know. It might be cool. Yeah, you could reverse it and forward it and do that little... I don't have one of those. Pitty, pitty. I could just put your voice in there <laughs> doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> hey, yeah, what's that hand signal thing? I, I, the only hand signal I know I can't, I, I shouldn't do because it was evil. What is it? East Coast, Unless West the peace Coast. Sign. We did the peace East sign. Coast, West Coast. West Coast. West Side. That's that's beyond me. Pterodactyl. I think this is getting out of. I think this is getting out of control. This one's a doggy. Oh, our audience speaks. Now we're getting now feedback we're getting a response. from, the, from so the funny part over there. there. So now uh, they're paying attention. Yeah. What do we have to do? Cut each other in here to get some attention out of you guys? Jeez Louise. That's a good idea. So people love blood. We do like set each other on fire. We, well. <laughs> then I have a '63 Impala following. So. Uh, Ken, if you're out there, buddy. We love you. We love you. Um, you got anything you want to talk about? This is stuff I heard. Uh, you got anything to promote? No. Hey, Bill. Hey, Bobby. Hey, Dixie. Hey, Bill. Hey, Bobby. Hey, Dixie. Merle. Oh, hey, Merle. Merle. Merle, you smell so good. I, was, I don't know how you smell in you. Can I talk about Merle's legs? Huh? Can I talk about Merle's legs? <laughs> we like Merle. We love Merle and Bobby and Dixie. Okay. You know, have, I, have I gone over the edge? <laughs> you don't want to throw out your own channel? Oh no, I don't. You know, I don't care about this. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, don't. You know, listen. Save your time. Go watch Musty Warren, Musty Warner, Warner sixty three and Pal Two Door, or Mister Heavy, Mister Mrs Heavy Chevy. They're awesome. Or One Lonely Farmer. Or One Lonely Farmer. Or Cut Worm. Cut Worm fifty nine. He's completely awesome. Or George, the shot, the George, the uh, shade tree fiction mechanic. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. so many people out there. Oh, go watch uh, Big Daddy nineteen ninety two. There He's you got go. A channel, you know. Go. Yeah. yeah. Don't waste your time on my crap. It's just totally useless, worthless. I wouldn't watch it myself. I'd, I'd watch, watch mine though. I wouldn't watch his either. I would, I'd watch mine. Sometimes mine have a lot I, of helpful things. Yeah. Sometimes I, you know, a lot of cooking videos. I don't have any internet right now, so it makes it really convenient to you know tell people I, I can't watch your videos because I don't have any internet. I mean, he showed up and he was like, wow, you lost a lot of weight. I'm like, yeah, you haven't watched any videos, have you? Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. You could have seen the mm -hmm. progress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to yeah. wrap this up. Um, keep your hands and arms inside the vehicle at all times. And uh, uh, tip your waiter and waitresses. And uh, uh, Oh, the vote's coming out soon. Make sure to uh, do some research. Find out who you're going to vote for. And the first Tuesday of November... Your private, your your elections are going to be op open. Just do some research. Find out who you're going to vote for. We're going to do an absentee ballot. We're going to do an absentee ballot. I can't vote in Georgia, but I know who I would vote for if I could. But I can't. So since I can, I'm going to vote for somebody up there. But I, I'm not going to talk about that because I don't do politics. That's it. That's it. We're going to wrap it up. Say bye now. Bye. -bye.